So I put on a pair of goggles one day, put my head underwater, within three minutes I'd found a chunk of gold. And my friend who was with me couldn't get back to the car quick enough to get a pair of goggles too. And ever since then, it's just been a full on obsession. I can't explain what a day of that's like. It's like, it's a weird type of satisfaction. It's all it is is a little yellow shiny rock and it's just, it just mesmerizes, you don't know what it is. It's just, I think more than the rock, it's the hunt, it's the process, it's, it's the adventure. My name's Luke Morgan. I'm just about to turn 40. I live in northern New South Wales, Australia. Grew up in Brisbane, went to school in Brisbane. Brisbane was in boys' grammar school, <laughs> which is which I was I was very out of place there. I was a country boy in the big city. So the second I finished my schooling, then I moved down to northern New South Wales and chased waves on a bodyboard and I had a real good time doing it. I spent from then till now, from 19, chasing waves, searching for reefs. For me, bodyboarding was an adventure and an experience. As I got older, I somehow fell into gold fosking, which has been a very similar ride and just as satisfying as riding waves. I still do both with a passion. But the gold fosking for me, it started off slow, but I think what got me into it was that I found gold the first time I looked for it and I think that was the beginning of the end. Whether you call it a good thing or my wife might say it's a bad thing, I've been obsessed with it ever since. Gloves, shoes, socks, hood, good. This is a good spot here. Back a few years ago, my mate found ounces and ounces of gold along a quartz stringer along here. And what, he, what it was, it was like every time we'd move a lot of dirt, and we'd move that much dirt, and it'd just be littered with gold nuggets all the way along. So we worked it from one side of the river to the other, and then it was done, and he probably pulled about $5,000 worth of gold out of it, and it was, yeah. So this whole area was historically a very productive gold area. The thing we're finding is because we're going underwater, we're getting the stuff that the old timers missed. The old timers would clean it out and they, they couldn't see what was going on down there. So they'd often probably leave a few nuggets in the, the very base of the bedrock. And with our snorkel and goggles, we come through and we can, we see every bit of gold so we can get every bit of gold. We don't leave it unworked. So it's very simple. You just wave your hand over the top of it Everything moves, but gold being so heavy is still stuck in the cracks. The possibility is out there to find a crack full of nuggets that no one's ever seen that it's three metres underwater. So when you get siphon for gold, you've got a pretty simple kit. It's pretty, pretty small. Main weapon's the tiger claw, which we used to scratch out rocks out of the cracks. And the gold sits in the deepest part of the bedrock underneath hard packed pebbles. So you've really got to lever and get out there. Light see for my old eyes and when you find the gold this here is called a snuffer bottle and the way a snuffer bottle works is it's got the, the tube goes into the thing and you squeeze it and when you let it go it sucks out here and that'll suck the gold up and when the gold falls in there because that bit's longer it'll stay in the bottle so once it's in a snuffer bottle it's in your pocket um, you also got a hammer break up bedrock sometimes it gets a bit difficult break a bit of bedrock smaller pick snorkel and goggles and that's all it is. So this spot we'll go to today, I've floated through it once and we had relative success, but then we kept moving because we were trying to get to another spot. So it was always a spot I thought, geez, we'll revisit this one day and you know, why not today? We'll go down and see what's down there. There's definitely a lot more to be worked.
here's what we just found. Let's have a look. A few nice chunks. What I'm doing now is I'm just seeing what I've got and I'm getting rid of all the sand that's left over that's not gold. So all I've got is gold at the end of the day. Because gold's heavier, it's pretty easy to separate from the other materials. So there's a few different techniques used with the pan. The main one's banging and I'll get all that gold up in the top corner there. And I can use my snuffer bottle. Get rid of all the sand and it leaves me with just the gold. I do sell most of my gold, but I've kept certain pieces that are special to me for whatever reason. So like this bit here, first bit I ever detected. This bit here is the first bit I ever found on the dive hooker within 15 minutes of using it. And that's my biggest bit so far, it weighs about nine grams. That's hopefully gonna be a family heirloom and I've made it made into a necklace for my daughter. But these are all the bits that hold something special to me, so I've kept them. Very small amount compared to what I've actually found, but you've got to have something to show for your hard work. The dream with this would be to turn it into a career. I enjoy it and I'd love to share it with people. I think it's the main thing. I really, I really passionately enjoy this and to be able to share it with them would be a dream come true and to be able to make a living from it would be even better. So hopefully that bleeds into my YouTube channel a bit, my passion for it and to connect with other people that are passionate about it too. And I like the idea that my grandkids can watch my stuff one day and saw that what granddad come out and did. Oh, that, that really appeals to me. It's, yeah, documenting the story. I wish I started earlier, but I didn't. Today we're going to go somewhere a bit deeper, so we need different tools. And here the dive hooker comes into it. Let's go. When we first bought the dive hooker, I won't lie, it is, it is a weird feeling sitting on the bottom for an hour at a time. But it didn't take long to get used to it. The more you focus on your breath, the more you get out of it. You're just focusing on your breathing and looking for gold, and it's, it's, it's nearly like meditation, that's how I'd describe it. You've got time to think, I suppose. I think the feeling of coming out here is a feeling of freedom, but it's also, it's the possibility of what could happen in the day. I mean, a lot of times you don't come home on a high, but every time when you're driving out here, you, you're pumped. You're, well, anything could happen. Today's the day I find the ounce nugget. Today's the day this happens. Today's the day that happens. And the closer you get, the feeling of anticipation and possibility just grows. started driving all over the valley looking for spots and when I drove into this spot here something really weird happened to me which never happened in my life before is um I felt this overwhelming sensation like I was gonna die here it, it wasn't a panicking sensation it was weird it was like it was like I belonged here if that makes sense and it was the second I drove over the first hill I was like oh, I felt like I was gonna die at an old age here I've never experienced I'm not a spiritual person but I felt that I think I'll continue on to my old age with both surfing and doing this.
It's in your blood, kind of. I don't understand how it's in my blood, but it is in my blood. It, it feels right, and I love doing it.